But you, you were, were born, born here, that's all that you need. You are an American. But us foreigners! Wild West Side Story is, by all means, a love story based on Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. The core of the drama revolves around a racial conflict between Americans and immigrant Puerto Ricans. It wasn't always going to be this way. In its first conception, Bernstein had called it East Side Story, envisaging a conflict between Roman Catholics and Jews. A number of things made him change his mind. World War II and anti-Semitism were fresh in the minds of the public. Matters of gang violence and juvenile delinquency were prevalent in the news. And with the wealth of exciting styles and dance forms that were emerging from Latin America, Bernstein settled on West Side Story as we know it today. The racial conflict emerges in the music in a number of ways some quite clear and others more subtle. Right from the beginning, the American jets are labelled with a kind of jazz blues music, jazz being understood as an American musical language. When the Puerto Rican sharks first appear, what we hear instead is pitched percussion, evoking bongo drums, an Afro-Cuban instrument. This music seems to frame them as a threat to the Americans, accompanied by what I think of as the hate motive. With its distinctive tritone, and this will become important later, the sharks here are musically the racial other, the subaltern, in a sense more musically primitive when we see them through the jet's eyes. And this idea of the sharks as subaltern, as on the lowest rung of the racial hierarchy, is reflected throughout the drama. Chico, Chico. Get your friends out of here, Bernardo. And stay out. So what if they do turn this whole town into a stinking pigsty? Hey, but that's Stop just the them. beginning. One of the greatest examples of different musical styles representing racial conflict comes in the dance in the gym sequence. The two gangs go to a community dance and anticipate the possibility of a fight. Here, Bernstein uses an array of styles that ethnically represent both gangs. The first music we hear is jazz played by a full big band as the American Jets turn up. Then, as the dance begins, we hear a promenade based on the Paso Doble, a Hispanic line dance well known in Mexico. However, Bernstein makes this into a kind of parody. While it should fall into A flat major, it crashes into F major, the wrong key, as if by mistake. And then, with the weight of the bass drum and trombones, it becomes a heavy-footed, grotesque caricature of itself, instead of the graceful, light dance that it should be. Then comes the Mambo, a Cuban dance form here fully orchestrated and written with breakneck intensity, though Bernstein does remain fairly true to the Mambo style. This number is used as an opportunity for an aggressive dance-off between the gangs. We could say that here is one of the few opportunities the Sharks have to musically express themselves, communicating their identity and their angst through dance rather than speech or violence. The cries of descend directly from the flamenco tradition, where dancers are urged on by enthusiastic onlookers. The mambo flows into a delicate cha-cha, another Cuban dance, as the world freezes around the lovers. And when they begin speaking, they're accompanied by an American filmic style of music. So warm. Then, as the world around them begins to re-emerge, Bernstein brings back the Paso Doble music, again as a caricature of itself, starting in slow motion and, with the room, gradually whirring back to full speed. As the gym empties and focus returns to the Jets, we get another jazz number in a swung blues style. Finally, Tony sings Maria, a kind of convergence of the American blues harmonic language 
with the Latin American rhythmic language. And suddenly that name will never be the same to me. And at the same time, that triturn of the hate motive. is resolved into a love motive. Maria, I just kissed a girl. And so, in this amazing song, these two binaries, love, hate, and American Puerto Rican, are temporarily conflated, resolved, brought into unity. But there's another, more disturbing and subtle way in which Bernstein portrays racial conflict in the music. First, let's take the song America, probably the only other chance the Puerto Ricans get to have their own expressive musical voice, though they use it, mostly ironically, to sing about the greatness of America. The beginning of this song is in tempo de seis, a genre that was fairly popular in Puerto Rico, in fact, the only genre of Puerto Rican origin in the whole musical. Bernstein uses Spanish guitar, claves, and guiro to adhere to the traditional style. Bernstein's choice of the seis means he can allude to the seis de bomba, or the seis de controversia, which were used for the delivery of sly insults and argumentative exchanges. I know you don't smoke on your pipe and put Latin on it. The main body of this song adopts a tempo de huapango. The huapango originated in Mexico and is recognizable by its constant hemiola patterns. Other moments, such as this musical jeer, allude to Mexican mariachi bands. Whatever the musical origins, this song gives the Puerto Ricans the opportunity to express their own musical voice as they sing and dance together, even if it is a pan-Latin American voice and not specifically Puerto Rican. So, dramatically, both the Mambo and America afford the Puerto Ricans a chance to express themselves and affirm their identity through music and dance. And yet, both songs later become stripped of their identity and become tools in the disturbing rape scene, where we're reminded again that to the Jets, the sharks are closer to objects than humans. To understand the depth of this scene, let's have a quick look at Anita's character. The two main female characters in the plot, Anita and Maria, form another kind of dramatic binary. Jenny Rivera, not the singer, has said how Latin American women tend to be portrayed as both innocent virgins and sexy vixens. And in this musical, these ideas are split between the two characters. There's the innocent, virginal Maria, dressed in white to symbolize purity, conforming more to Western ideals of marriage, and even played by a white American actress in the film, perhaps making the interracial love affair more palatable to audiences of the time. And then there's the raunchy, sexually liberal Anita, who enjoys the freedom to express herself socially and sexually. Here, her sexual ideas are accompanied by saxophone glissandi, reminding us of the blues women such as Bessie Smith and Ma Rainey. These blues women, Ann Davis writes, were emblematic of female sexual and social freedom, and were tough, resilient, and independent women, unafraid of defending their right to be respected as autonomous human beings. So, perhaps, Anita represents more than just the sexually exotic. She represents freedom from both white and male dominance. So what happens when her freedom and ideals are stripped and crushed by white males? When the Jets overpower and attempt to rape her? The scene begins with the Jets playing the Mambo on the jukebox. This is what's called diegetic music, meaning the characters on stage can hear it too. What was once a music for the Puerto Ricans to freely express themselves is now used to mock and intimidate them. In this sense, the music's original meaning is stripped from it and its identity is belittled just as the Jets want to strip Anita of her humanness and pass her around like an object without a voice. The music that once allowed Anita to assert her freedom and sense of self now reinforces social division, and here emphasizes her position as an unwelcome outsider. The music on the jukebox fades, and is replaced by non-diegetic music resembling the huapango sounds of the song America. An exciting anticipation builds with shimmering strings and muted trumpet creating a disturbing, uncomfortable relationship between what we hear and what we see. When the main riff finally appears, it's perverted out of form in an irregular time signature with heavy, dissonant punctuation. When the America theme returns a second time, it's more harmonically true to itself and in the right time signature, but this time completely overwhelming and over-orchestrated with its use of cross rhythms, extreme dissonance, fortissimo dynamics, and immense orchestration. Anita is treated not as a human, but as a piece of meat. And just as she is stripped of her dignity, voice, and independence, the tune to America is stripped of its original significance, 
no longer the Puerto Rican's musical voice, as it is overpowered by the dominance of the immense forces of Western classical music. West Side Story is in so many ways an amazing musical, and it gives us a study of how something as complex as racial conflict can be portrayed in music in a way that is refined and meaningful, without being obvious and artless. Throughout his career, whether in his teachings, his concerts, or his music, Bernstein was a great advocate for peace and unity across mankind. And yet here, beneath the surface of the musical, he seems to ask the question, can these different ethnic identities ever truly combine peacefully, or will there always be conflict? Yet Bernstein is perhaps too intelligent to provide an answer to this question, and instead we are left at the end with ambivalence, reconciliation. Contrasted with Maria's newfound hatred. Well, I can kill too, because now I have hate! All underpinned by this ambiguous triton. Which once represented both hate and love. I hope you enjoyed this. Now what I wanted to do with this channel is pass on an appreciation for art music, whether film, musical, orchestral, anything of that kind. I might cover pieces that aren't so well known and the point of that is to pass on an appreciation for why that music is so great, whether Tchaikovsky, Beethoven or a lesser known living composer. And through this you might learn how to appreciate a whole new world of music. So if you like this and want to see more then subscribe, give this a like and thanks for watching. Buenas noches. Hola, Maria. Adios.